Now we're going to turn our attention to subtraction with positive and negative numbers, and you'll see it's going to be a real simple process because we just make a new definition for subtraction, define subtraction in terms of addition, and then we use our rules for addition. So the first thing I want to do is write the rule for subtraction on the board, and that's this. A subtract B is always the same as A plus negative B. Now that's how we define subtraction with positive and negative numbers. To subtract B, we add the opposite negative B. Now here's what you do with that definition. Simply accept it. You just accept that definition. There's no debate over it. This is the way we define subtraction in algebra. It doesn't matter whether you like the definition or not. You simply have to accept it. Now let's see how we can apply this definition to some subtraction problems and see how the answers come out. 8 subtract 5. Well, according to my definition, this is 8 plus negative 5. So instead of subtracting a positive 5, I add its opposite negative 5. Now I have an addition problem. I know how to add 8 and negative 5. The answer is simply 3. Now that's consistent with the answers that you used to get just by regular um, uh, general math or basic math kind of subtraction. 8 subtract 5 is 3. So this new definition that I've gotten right here for subtraction as being addition of the opposite gives me an answer that's consistent with the answers I'm used to getting. But what this definition does is allows us to add a wi or subtract a wider variety of problems. Here's our next one. 8 subtract 2. I'm sorry, negative 8 subtract 2. So that's negative 8 plus a negative 2. So instead of subtracting positive 2, I add its opposite, negative 2. Notice that the number in front here, negative 8, stays exactly the same. Just like in my definition, it's a subtract b and a plus the opposite of b. That first number doesn't change at all. Now I have an addition problem, negative 8 plus negative 2. That comes out to be negative 10. So if somebody was to say to you, what is the answer to negative 8 subtract 2? You might say 6 or negative 6, something like that. No, the answer is negative 10. That's the correct answer to this problem. It always has been, it always will be. We arrive at this answer by changing subtraction to addition of the opposite and then changing and then applying my rule for addition to get negative 10. So you may find that the, your intuition tends to give you, tends to make you feel like some of your answers aren't correct when they actually are. Don't pay too much attention to your intuition right now. Simply try to change every subtraction problem to addition of the opposite, apply the rule for adding positive and negative numbers, and take, get those answers, check them in the back of the book until you start to operate correctly with subtraction. How about 15 subtract negative 20? Okay, my first number is 15. It doesn't change. Instead of subtraction, I'm going to change to addition. And instead of negative 20, I'm going to change to positive 20. So instead of subtracting a negative 20, I add its opposite, positive 20. Now, 15 plus 20, 35. So 15 subtract a negative 20 is always the same as 15 plus 20. That gives us 35. Here's our next problem. Negative 4 subtract negative 4. Well, that will be negative 4. Instead of subtraction, I'm going to change to addition. Instead of negative 4, I'm going to write its opposite, positive 4. Negative 4 plus positive 4 turns out to be simply 0. So negative 4 subtract negative 4 comes out to be 0. And I found that by changing subtraction to addition of the opposite and then using my rule for addition. So what you want to do is uh, work with this definition for subtraction enough so that you're comfortable with this. I actually never think in terms of subtraction. I always think in terms of addition when I work these problems. Let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. 9 subtract 2 subtract 3. Now when I work this problem, I think to myself 9 plus negative 2 plus negative 3. Because even if I don't write subtraction, I always think, even if I don't change to addition of the opposite, I always think of subtraction in terms of addition of the opposite. So let's see. Let's write this as 9 plus negative 2 plus negative 3. So instead of subtracting 2, I change to addition of the opposite. Instead of subtracting 3, I change to adding negative 3. Now, 9 plus negative 2 is 7 plus negative 3. 7 plus negative 3 is 4. So I do my subtraction by thinking in terms of addition. Even if I don't write this step, I still think this way. 9 plus negative 2 is 7. 7 plus negative 3 is 4. Here's another problem. 7 subtract the quantity 3 minus 9, subtract 6. Okay, 7 subtract, inside the parentheses, 3 subtract 9. 
I'm going to think of this as 3 plus negative 9. When I do that, my answer is negative 6. Subtract 6. 7 subtract negative 6 is the same as 7 plus 6. Subtracting 6 over here is the same as adding its opposite, negative 6. I never change what I do when I run across subtraction. I always change to addition of the opposite. 7 plus 6 is 13 plus negative 6, and 13 plus negative 6 is what? 7. That's right, 7. So 7 plus, uh, 13 plus negative 6 turns out to be 7. Okay, now it's up to you to accept this rule or this, this definition for subtraction. Subtraction is addition of the opposite. That's just the way it is. The rule isn't going to change. If you don't think it should be that way, you have to change and accept the rule. Just do it. Then work enough problems by changing subtraction to addition of the opposite till you get used to it, and then start yourself thinking about not thinking in terms of subtraction, but always thinking in terms of addition.